welcome to Retro Bassin. Well, what's left of it anyway. <laughs> if you follow the channel, you know that we have been on uh, just a wee bit of a hiatus here on the old Retro Bassin channel. Well, and uh, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about that journey that we've been on and also bring you along for the little journey ahead. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. A few weeks ago, we packed up the majority of our belongings here in Driftwood, Texas. Packed up the family, as well as a 22-foot Penske truck. Did my best Jerry Reed impression and got east bound and down. Set the family up in Northeast Florida, where we'll be living for the next six or so months until we figure out sort of where in the sunshine state we want to live full time. Well, I got the family situated in Fernandina Beach, I got the kids enrolled in school, and took the first flight back to Texas that I could do to wrap up the house and also bring that most important of retro possessions, and that is the 2018 Bass Tracker Heritage, AKA the Retro Wagon. The Bass Tracker is hooked up and the 4Runner is loaded down with probably a, enough soft plastics to outfit a small Bass Pro Shops. So in just a few short minutes, uh, we're going to get uh, eastbound and down and <laughs> loaded up and trucking. But before I do close down the house and uh, film my final episode, at least my final starting episode here in Driftwood, Texas, I thought it was only fitting to finish right where we started. If you happen to tune into episode one of this channel, I think it was probably in 2018 or 19 at this point, I actually started out my little monologue on the mission statement for Retro Bassin right here on this very picnic table, or maybe it was that one, but either way, it was one of the two picnic tables. It is a little bit weird to be back here with everybody uh, back east, and I've had a few nights here kind of packing up the house, doing some touch-up work and, and things like that in preparation for getting the house sold, and I've had a chance to do a little bit of introspection on the channel. Definitely so many things that uh, I think we haven't accomplished yet with Retro Bassin. It pains me to take a little hiatus like this. We're pretty good at cranking out an episode a week. And as you know, as those weeks tick by, I think it's been about four weeks since I uploaded my last video. Uh, it's a bummer because again, there's still so many lures left to talk about, so much content left to put out there, and so many projects, honestly, just kind of unfinished at this point. So. Rest assured, even though the channel is going to be looking different uh, from here on out, especially if I'm going to be living in Northeast Florida, there's going to be a, just a twinge of a saltwater flair to some of the stuff we do. Uh, the mission statement stays the same. And at Retro Bassin, it's all about fishing at old school and reliving the glory days of bass fishing. Those rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past, talking about the lures the inventors that made them, and the fishing personalities that made them famous. As far as this little trip goes heading east, I do have a few stops on the way that I've been meaning to make. Uh, I just happened to be driving past a couple of my favorite local tackle shops, and some I have not been to in quite a while. So looking forward to that. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the journey, and I'll see you soon. I'll show you the Retro Bass Studio one last time. <laughs> Ain't much of a studio anymore, oh man. So here was the wall of tackle boxes. Bus seat used to be there. And this was the old Retro Bass Studio. <laughs> Ain't much to it anymore, oh man. One day, one day. We'll be back soon. All right. Well, there's the old Retro Wagon. Uh, I'll turn the camera around and let you get a look at her. There she is all rigged up for the road. It's 
funny, it came with his boat cover. I have not until today used it, but that is a honey of a boat cover. Look at that nice logo. Bass Tracker, 1978 to 2018. <laughs> uh, she's a good looking vehicle, isn't she, Clark? All right, let's get on it. All right, well, we just pulled into the first stop of the trip. Didn't make it too far outside of Driftwood, Texas, but I could not leave the state of Texas without stopping at this place. Uh, I'm in the parking lot of a cool little tackle shop just in Austin, Texas, by the name of Jensen Fish and Tackle, and we've done a, an episode or two here. So uh, <laughs> here we are. Right in front of the uh, classic Jensen Fish Tackle sign. Looks a little uh, worse for the wear. <laughs> it's been a minute since I last filmed here. And there is the iconic Jensen Fish and Tackle sign. Here we are inside Jensen Fish and Tackle. And if you happen to swing by Jensen in Austin, Texas, look, they still have a retro bass and hat or two for sale. <laughs> So well, there are a few things that I want to pick up here for sure. First and foremost, I'm heading to the back of the store because I need to pick up some more black silver minnows. Uh, I think I owe my buddy Ted Lincoln a few of them and I'm going to be fishing on those sort of tannin laden Florida lakes. Those black silver minnows are like black gold. Back here in the back wall of Jensen Fishing Tackle and probably one of my favorite tackle walls of all time just the years and years and probably decades and decades of fishing tackle history just buried packed in here still waiting to be discovered so right out of the gates i see this it says quarter blk that is black we'll see if that is a uh, silver minnow Ooh, and it is a whole pack of quarter ounce black silver minnows. Yeah, those are coming with. <laughs> My last shot, man. So we need to find more black ones. Looks like it kind of cleared out a little bit since I was last here. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Uh, got some more black ones right there. It gets a, another quarter ounce. So I'll have to check out those. Nice. They've also got a ton of these too. The old Sprite spoon. That's a cool looking little spoon. That'd probably work on a sea trout, wouldn't it? That little fish logo is calling my name. <laughs> uh, what is this thing? Ooh, yeah, the old hog hustler spoons. Uh, you know, I'm probably not gonna pick this up. I totally should have grabbed some of these for Lake Travis. That'd be a good jigging spoon. Good looking color too, I like that. Sort of re reminiscent of a old bomber slab spoon. And what do we have here? Ah, uh, a nice box of, this is the old, what is this? the Weber Professional Fisherman Spoon. That's actually a good saltwater spoon. I am gonna grab a box of these. I've been meaning to grab this. I think I showed this the last time I was here. That's a cool looking bait and really nice display. Yeah, that'll be cool. I just moved down a little bit. Look at that, I spotted. Minnow Sane. Uh, the best bait is free. Sane your own minnows from the Douglas Net Company. Honestly, that looks like a blast. Down at the beach where we uh, normally go every night after dinner, there's just a ton of bait fish in the water. And a seine, that could be a blast to do with the kids. I think I might grab that, that's awesome. <laughs> and there's a few of them left if you guys wanna get your own Douglas Minnow seine. This has long been one of my favorite little nooks and crannies of this place. A nice little section of Fred Arbogast snooker saltwater lures. 
There are primarily two different varieties here. I've looked at these for a while now. I've never actually bought one. I think today is the day because I think I know some waters where these are actually gonna be really good. So first here is the variety of that bait. Let me get the autofocus going here. The variety of that bait that is the top water walker. It's an all wooden bait, good looking bait. You almost hate to rip that out of the old school packaging. Uh, it is $9.99, but for a vintage all wooden bait, that's actually not too bad of a price. And that thing's got some heft. That's gonna cast pretty well. So there's this one, which is the blue top water. I like that a lot. And then there is a little diving minnow version of the snooker as well. It's got just a little bit of a lip on it. That's a good looking bait as well. Also $9.99. Does it have the uh, size on it? It does not. But that looks like what? 3 eighths, half an ounce, something like that. Nice. Also a nice snooker in this sort of flow pink. That's pretty sweet. That'll show up. And then the walker. Looks like the bigger version and the chartreuse back with a pearl side. Like that. Ooh. A little red. Look at that. Alright, we'll grab a few of these. Since we were last here, it looks like they've reorganized their section of Perhaps my favorite Jensen fishing tackle bait, and that is the Jensen Extractor. This is such a cool old school bucktail. We featured this a couple times on the channel, and this thing is definitely a nice little fish catcher, which you can get for $1.19. This is an old school bucktail with a barrel swivel, and the story goes that uh, this deer hair actually came from locally harvested deer in the Austin area sometime in the 1960s. There is still a ton of these on the shelf. Of course, they don't make these anymore, so when these are gone, and one day they will be, boy, they'll be gone forever. Uh, I have stocked up on probably enough of these, so I don't know if I need to get any today, but boy, uh, it's cool just to see this wall of old school bucktail. Speaking of episodes still left to film, not too long ago, I was in a local tackle shop and came across a pack of eagle claw hooks that got me thinking, who is that iconic man that has been gracing the pack of eagle claws for about as long as I can remember? This is a new in the box <laughs> uh, pack of eagle claw snelled hooks, which are probably older than me. Look at that. <laughs> Anyway, I reached out to Eagle Claw Hooks. I got the full story on this guy. So stay tuned for a history of Eagle Claw Hooks. I better pick this up as a little bit of a reminder. <laughs> what a great looking package of hooks. Oh, Just getting ready to pull out of here and I came across something I've never actually seen before at Jensen Tackle and that is this nice old school bait from Mr. Twister, the Spinner Top Striper Jig. I don't know how many stripers I'm going to be fishing for down in FLA, but man, that would totally catch a sea trout. That is pretty sweet. Looks like a nice little bucktail jig with a little spinner on top for $2.95. And looks like there's four of them. So, uh, one, two, oh, stuck on there. <laughs> it's going on, probably been on here for like 30 years. Yeah, those will come with too. I could totally uh, maybe even throw a little minnow on the back of that and catch a flounder. So folks ask, you still shipping extractors out? Yes, yes. Still are. Uh, we have a few of those Indian boxes still left. You sold a lot of those boxes though, didn't you? Oh, yes, a lot. That's a cool All box. over the place too. Really? Yes. What's the yes, furthest man. order you had? Like US stuff, outside, anybody like Random California Northeast. Uh, mainly like uh, oh, that was mine. mainly like California. Okay. Uh, a little bit uh, Northeast, and I think one person in Canada. No kidding. That's no, awesome, like, man. Oh man, they're like, yeah, I saw you on Retro Bag. Well, that is a little bit bittersweet. I did get out of there with a pretty good haul of some old school gold. If you guys are in the Austin area anytime, definitely check out this place. It is totally worth a stop and tell them all Retro sent you. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastards.